are these people? Next portion of the story in the next article from Taibi that is also a paid article also includes a, a very short video from our friend um, Matt Orfala, who's also an Indie Media Award honoree, top video creator, Racket News, Indie Media Award honoree, written by Matt Taibi and Undead Foya. The censorship files, again, going back to Kate Starbird's quote, we have very little evidence about what works. But before that, let's watch this little short 14 second video, and hopefully it's not muted. It's not. From Orf. Now you and your team, you guys created a website. Hamilton 68. Yes, yeah, so my colleagues and I, we tracked Russian accounts. That's some bullshit. So they're literally right now, they're Russian bots, according to your website, that are putting this out into the world. Is that right. correct? It's bullshit. The, right? So that's Orf. And we go into the story that on April 11th, 2021, the University of Washington's Kate Starbird sent a letter to former FBI agent Clint Watts, that's the guy who was on that video right there, whom Racket readers will recognize as the face of the ill-fated Hamilton 68 dashboard. Funded. Funded by the Alliance for Security Democracy, whose board contains former heads and deputy heads of agencies like CIA, NSA, DHS, nothing to worry about there. Hamilton 68 spawned hundreds of incorrect stories about alleged Russian bot activity. In the Twitter files, we found executives reverse engineered the dashboard, quote unquote. It's not even a dashboard. It's really just a list of Twitter accounts discovered it was full of people unconnected to Russia, and argued that it should be called out for the quote-unquote bullshit that it is, but they didn't. Watts, in early April 2021, had invited Starbird to join a societal resilience roundtable after being asked by the new administration to gather a special group of experts for an off-the-record roundtable. Like I said, these guys love their roundtables and their tabletop discussions. Here's the email, all right? And he, again, there, there's the reference to societal re resilience to disinformation. It's only a few days away. I believe your work and knowledge is particularly relevant and insightful to this discussion. Garbage. Later, Watts then added that the roundtable would also include several members of the National Security Council. We mentioned that earlier in our intro. It says... Uh, they're working on strategies for countering disinformation and strengthening resiliency on the session next Monday. Still waiting on a few to answer the invitation, and we'll add them. God only knows how many there were in total. Right? Uh, here we go. He then asks participants to compile any references for talking points so their National Security Council guests can read them ahead of the meeting. Give me the cliff notes in advance. Right, Starbird responds with a list with a list of replies, amusingly suggesting that the idea of a disinformation czar would be seen as partisan as an, and ineffective. <laughs> Note the date on the email: the disinformation governance board, featuring singing censor Nina Jankowitz, would be launched a year later on April twenty seventh, twenty twenty two, and despite the efforts. Yeah. I can't believe they did it, despite efforts to frame the idea as a sensible one, okay, that it's going to tackle Russia and migrant smugglers, announced the AP. It was shut down shortly after amid catcalls and accusations that the Biden administration was trying to establish a ministry of truth. Just like Harry Potter, they had a ministry Russian of truth. Scum. Yeah, they had a ministry of truth, I believe, in, in Harry Potter stories. <clears throat> Right? This part's duplicated. Starbird, who had no comment about the disinformation governance board lie, went on responding to the proposed question, what do we still not know? <clears throat> well, she answered, we have very little evidence about what works to help people be more resistant to disinformation. She at least admits that platform labels seem to work in very narrow cases, 
only <laughs> right and could be harmful elsewhere yeah like for rt contributors they but it was intentionally harmful elsewhere so it it's funny how she says that it seems to work in some cases so i would guess that that's censoring the speech that they would that they find inconvenient yeah that that narrow case was like fiorella that's what that was like uh, it was sometimes it could get people to you know, but Harm, like right, but harmful elsewhere, like like Garland Nixon, right. who also had a label put yep. on his account for a while, though he only worked for an American company. Sputnik Radio is an American company. Well, or or something like the BBC, or you know, those other publications that are government funded, right? You know, like that would be an issue. Right. So it could be harmful elsewhere. Yeah. So Matt wants to note that these thoughts about the lack of evidence were, were being conveyed after the election integrity partnership, which I mentioned earlier, to which Starbird Center at the UW had been a partner. Twitter files showed the company often applied labels in response to EIP flags. So Starbird yeah. added that the benefits of pre-bunking were also unclear. And the same went for media literacy training. That didn't mean that they were against it. They were just saying it was unclear. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yep. So, so here's to Clint from Kate, April 11th, ahead of the meeting. What should we do? Collaborative work to rapidly identify, track, and even reveal the trajectories of disinformation. Work with journalists to help them report on mis- and disinformation to, sp to reach broader audiences. You mean plant your own disinformation with, pop with popular journalists so that they can muddy the waters about the actual information that was inconvenient to what you didn't want put out there. Uh, ideally branching out yeah. beyond big outlets to local journalists so they want to infect everybody. We want to work with community partners and targeted communities to help build resilience too. But what should we try not to do? Right? What are are there interventions that we that have been tried but have shown not to be as effective? What lessons can we learn? Anything that makes the work of disinformation appear to be partisan, like a disinformation czar in the Biden administration, would be bad, is what she's saying there. 2021. They did it a year later, even though she's suggesting it as something that you shouldn't do. Just the mere right. suggestion, right? Again, this is further in her email saying that we have very little evidence about what works to help everyday people be better at identifying and being resilient, uh, resistant to disinformation. And here are some of those things. And then the last thing she's going to talk, he's going to talk about is this de-radicalization. Digital pathways that lead down the rabbit hole aren't so easily leveraged to bring people back again. You mean to unknow what they then find out because they went down said rabbit hole and found out a bunch of shit about what our government was doing and can't now unknow it? Yeah, like hmm. straight up fucking clockwork orange shit. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. You yeah, that's, that sounds perfectly normal. Oh. Starbird ultimately concluded... Holding some eyelids open. <laughs> As he says, Starbird ultimately concluded, the digital pathways that lead down the rabbit hole aren't so easily leveraged to bring people back again. As I just said, it may appear that she's saying that it doesn't seem like any of the things people like me do actually work, but that's not the case, she says now. In that passage, she says, I'm articulating the current state of the field concerns about some of the strategies being employed to address the problem and open questions that remain. And then she adds, oh my God, listen to this, Karening. Contrary to what's suggested in your assertion, open questions with a challenging problem space don't condemn the anti-disinformation project. They are part of scientific inquiry and suggest more reason to engage in research, not less. So, what? Well, uh, this woman's giving me a headache. How she gets involved in all this? Well, she's she's saying the line that everybody wants them wants her to say and wants to hear. So she continues to get elevated and promoted and amplified, even though it's completely wrong, or it's 
defunct science, as she's even admitting. She added that, quote, since the date of the email, scientists have made progress on identifying what researchers call interventions that can spread, that can reduce the spread of harmful false claims, including, I love this, accuracy nudges, whatever that means, media literacy training, lateral reading instruction, and more. Again, their own entire language to describe how they want to censor everybody else's speech. So they made progress since then. Watts, of course, declined to comment because what's he going to say? Starbird, complaining of cherry-picked emails, apologized on the email chain to Watts for causing him trouble. He didn't. Our FOIA request contained his name, which was why he got this car. Why we got this correspondence. Um, I noted that Watts via Hamilton 68 was himself responsible for many incorrect news stories. The Washington Post alone issued eight corrections resulting from analysis from the Hamilton 68 dashboard. And then asked Starbird why this brand of disinformation, right, which reaches papers like the Post, the Washington Post and the New York Times, isn't more concerning than sites she focuses on, like Gateway Pundit and Occupy Democrats. She focuses on the more partisan side. So we know that basically she's a shit lip. Um, Occupy Democrats, even like liberals think that Occupy Dem Democrats is extremist leftist because they're incredibly in the tank for Democrats. It's, it's gross how much they are. But those aren't leftists. Those are corporatists. Those are apologists. All right. Gateway Pundit. I mean, not a left-wing site for sure by any means. Um, again, we know from other correspondents that Starbird pays attention to episodes like Hamilton 68, whose dashboard was designed by New Knowledge CEO Jonathan Morgan in conjunction with GEC contractor J.M. Berger. This matters. Why? Because back in 2018, just after New Knowledge was caught in a crazy scheme to create, ready for this, fake Russian Twitter accounts and have them follow Alabama Senate candidate Roy Moore, <laughs> they hired these guys again. Like, Starbird then wrote future Graphica chief Ben Nimmo, and Graphica is another one of these Hamilton 68-style NGO, but government-entwined agencies. And Ben Nimmo used to be the chief of information or some kind of a high-up spot at Meta, Facebook. Ben. All right. One topic, again, considering yesterday's news about new knowledge in the Alabama project, is to discuss ethics and boundaries between research, perhaps different kinds of research, and different kinds of action in this space. Just an idea. And here's where she's suggesting getting aggressive. I don't understand why they blocked out Ben Nimmo's Facebook email address, because that's probably either at Meta or at Facebook.com. Really weird. I'm guessing that there were other people also named and included in CC that he decided to redact. The research director at New Knowledge, by the way, during the period of both the Alabama 68, the Alabama and Hamilton 68 episodes, was one Renee DeResta. We've talked about Renee DeResta before. Nimmo's Graphica and Starbird Center for an informed public would both go on to team up with DeResta in the 2020 Election Integrity Partnership. Apparently, that discussion of boundaries of ethics involving offensive information operations didn't judge the latter too harshly. I am not a fan of Renee DeResta. Let's just start off by saying that right now. Here's the proof showing that the Stanford Inter Internet Observatory, Graphica, the FR Lab, and the Washington University, University of Washington's Center for an Informed Public were partnered together on this. <clears throat> Kate's response was indignant. Of course it was. Saying that this exchange took place before I renew, knew Renee, but Renee is a brilliant researcher in four years of collaborating. I've never seen her do anything that can be classified as unethical. Obviously, you are looking too close. 
No. For the for the full set of UW emails, please visit the FOIA library, which is in the post, which you have to be a paid subscriber to be able to access. So please subscribe and support yeah. Matt and Racket News. <laughs> Why is my thing jumping around on me? I don't know. But while you're supporting Racket News, you can also drop a support over on INN. 